Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Total War Warhammer Legendary Lord Lore video. And today we are doing Helmen Gorst. Now, Helmen may indeed be one of the least legendary legendary lords we've ever done on the channel. Really, plucked from relative obscurity by CA, really an odd choice for one of the first two legendary lords. But he's never enjoyed as much of a heyday as he is perhaps enjoying in Immortal Empires with his unkillable zombie horde marching into action. So I thought, why not take a look at his lore? Helmand Gorst was born and raised in the village of Tempelhof, the youngest of five strong brothers. He soon found work as a farrier and a groom. That's to say, he was a specialist of horse hoof care, including their trimming and shoeing. He had followed his father into the profession, and for all accounts, was leading a relatively normal life in the village. But Helman did like a little bit of adventure, and would use any excuse to ride out as a messenger throughout Sylvania, which was a pretty dangerous endeavor given the area was Sylvania. But the man enjoyed his thrills. One day, after returning from one of these errands, he returned to the horror of finding his four brothers and their father dead from the Plague of the Blue Roses, so-called due to the fungus bruises that would cover the bodies of the dead and dying. The air of Gorse home was thick with fungal spores. Gorse was too distraught to care. In his despair, he couldn't imagine life without his family, and so embraced his brothers, fungus-covered corpses, hoping the plague would take him too. But the fates are cruel, and the plague of the Blue Roses did not take Helmand. Gorse's grief shifted over time, but he still refused to accept the loss of his family. But now, rather than joining them, he would bring them back into the world of the living. Sylvanians are aware of their home's dark histories, and that information on raising the dead was available, provided you asked in the right places. There are risks to dealing in these dark arts, however. If the Cult of Sigmar and their Witchfinders were to discover you, it would inevitably lead to a slow and painful death. This prospect would not dissuade Gorst, who delved into the study of necromancy. Soon, whether it was the odd lights coming from his home at night, missing corpses from the graveyard, or the stink of his family's rotting corpses, which he kept with him, the villagers had started to grow suspicious. One day, Albrecht von Corden, the witch hunter, awaited Gorst, who had underestimated the level of suspicion the town folk had, not expecting them to call in a witch finder. Von Corden had made a name for himself in Sylvania when he shot the Tempelhof Vargeist through the eye with a silver bullet, and then dragged its carcass to the centre of the town square, where he threw it upon the central bonfire. Gorst, now being hunted by this man, had no choice but to run, escaping the Witchfinder only by burying himself in amongst the corpses of a plague pit. Having avoided the Witchfinder for now, he packed up his few possessions and the bodies of his dead relatives onto a cart pulled by a pair of famished oxen, as Gorst fled south to Valgravia atop the rotting corpses of his family. It was while Gorst wandered this forsaken realm that he encountered Manfred von Karstein. The Count saw a powerful madness growing in Gorst's eyes. Instead of killing him for his presumption in trespassing, Manfred began to teach Gorst the secrets of necromancy, even going so far as to gift him an unholy tome of magic. It is no longer a desperate adventurer that answers to the name Helmand Gorst, just as it was no longer oxen that drew his carriage along the dirt tracks of Sylvania. Instead, his bone-ridged cart is pulled through the night by the four siblings he rescued from his village, each restored to a mockery of life and forced to stumble along at the head of their brother's unliving host. With his new powers, and now as a servant of Manfred, he took the ruins of the fortress of Konigstein as his seat of power. In the year 2522, Manfred von Karstein's plans, centuries in the making, were coming to fruition. For months, Manfred had been gathering and burying holy relics of gods of the old world in Sylvania. This was part of a ploy to minimize their power over the risen dead, and hopefully allow him to expand his realm of the dead and take over the territories of the living. 
Gorst had his part to play amongst his master's plan as a gloom settled over Sylvania, dimming the sky. Manfred had issued a challenge to the Empire, throwing a bloodless corpse through the skylight of the Imperial Palace into the annual meeting of the elect accounts, with a declaration of secession for Sylvania pinned to the corpse's chest, signed by Manfred himself. The body had been that of Stahlberg, one of Volkmar de Grimm's chief witchfinders. This prompted the Grand Theogenist, the head of the Church of Sigmar, to call for a Grand Crusade. Most of the Imperial Army at the time was fighting in the north against the forces of the Norse and Chaos. But the Cult of Sigmar managed to gather a small force and march into Sylvania. The Crusade, however, was woefully underprepared for the threat that lurked in that accursed land. The Cult of Sigmar's only remaining agent within Sylvania was von Corden, who had long haunted Helmand Gorst. He alone knew the threat that awaited the Crusade. He knew they would need reinforcements, and he had allies nearby who could help. He needed to signal them, however, from the Tower of Konigstein, a mission that would send him face to face with his long-hunted prey, Helmand Gorst. The two faced off at the ruins of the old fortress. On one side, Van Corden had the Sigmar's sons, the Silver Bullets, a contingent of the Knights of the Blazing Sun, and the cannon known as the Hammer of the Witches. Gorst, on the other hand, had his Festers in the Dusk, a Diapack, and the Konigstein Stalkers, as well as any dead he would raise on the battlefield. The fighting was fierce, but in the battle, Gorst was injured and was forced to flee. Van Corden's men pursued the Necromancer, but with the use of the freshly raised dead and the Strigani, who were a people who had served the Von Karstens for generations, had managed to cover the retreat of Gorst, who fled to his master's side at Schwarzhafen. Volkmar and Van Corden joined forces to face off against Gorst and Manfred outside the gates of Schwarzhafen. Their troops, the men of the Empire, began to get overwhelmed by the sheer number of the dead. But just as all seemed lost, Manfred and Gorse's attention were drawn elsewhere. As the two withdrew from battle, the risen dead, driven by their will, began to crumble as the men of the Empire fought back, giving chase to Manfred and Gorst. The event that had drawn Manfred away from the battle was that a source of his power, the Claw of Nagash, had been uncovered by a group of light wizards that von Corden had signaled from the Tower of Kornigstein. Manfred rushed to the castle of Sterneis, where he could protect his treasure and fight off the forces of Volkmar. This final confrontation would go on to be known as the Battle of the Barrows. The Crusaders, knowing in their hearts that this was the last chance they had to save Sylvania from eternal darkness, charged headlong into the ranks of undead, smashing rib cages and impaling torsos in a storm of violence. Manfred had anticipated their all-or-nothing approach and prepared accordingly, placing rank upon rank of freshly risen corpses at the front of his battle line. He allowed the bullish charges of the Empire troops to slay hundreds of his corpse puppets, expending their feverish momentum upon vassals that could be summoned back to unlife with a single phrase. Volkmar's oratory inspired his men, but even he was mortal, and his warhammer became heavier in his hands with each kill. Only once the Crusaders' sword strokes were as laboured as those of the corpses they fought did Manfred commit his reserves. From the barrows on either side of the Empire battle line came heavily armoured whites and ancient kings, their weapons seething through the ranks of exhausted Empire soldiery with horrible ease. Worse still, the dead crusaders jerked back to life to assail their comrades, the faces of brothers-in-arms twisted into rictus grins as they clawed at the eyes of their living counterparts. The Empire battle line wavered, a single push away from collapsing altogether. It was then that a great golden light poured out across the battlefield, and the ground itself erupted in sporadic bursts as far as the eye could see. This time, it was not the restless dead that emerged, but stolen holy symbols that Manfred's agents had buried months ago in the desecrated soil. 
gold-plated hammers of Sigmar, silver wolf totems of Ulrich, even the brass sun symbols of Myrmidia, hung suspended above the battlefield. A message for aid had reached the ears of Patriarch Balthasar Gelt himself, and the master of metal shifting had cast a great ritual to aid his allies. The effects had manifested at the critical moment, and the captured symbols were free. It was working spectacularly. Wherever the light of holy symbols shone out, the undead shriveled away, collapsing back into the dirt as a jumble of scorched bones. The crusaders gave a great shout of disbelief and joy, their tiredness washed away as they fell on those few undead left standing, hacking them to pieces or banishing them with their freshly ignited faith. In an instant, the tide had turned completely, and the battlefield was cluttered with piles of broken bones. When the mists of battles had cleared, however, there was no sign of Volkmar. He had been taken, and Manfred had escaped. The fate of Gorst after the Battle of the Barrows is a bit of a mystery, but we can presume he went seeking for ways to restore his brothers, perhaps, to more than just a shadow of their selves in their current shambling form. And that about does it, ladies and gentlemen, for the lore of Helm and Gorst. In terms of how Gorst played on the tabletop, he wasn't really his own character. He was basically a normal level 2 necromancer with set spells. He had a magical item which is available to all vampire necromancers known as the Cursed Book. He rolled a combination of dice to six random spells in the Law of Death or the Law of Shadows, if I remember correctly. And his brothers were a little bit stronger. They were slightly stronger than your average zombie with plus one strength compared to your average necromancer corpse cart. But he never had a model and so really was a bit of a non-character. Just uh, to give a name to your necromancer model as you played through the campaign of Sigmar's Blood on tabletop. All this made him a very odd choice for Total War Warhammer, but they have gone and made him his own in the Immortal Empires, allowing him with his zombie tide to sweep over vast swathes of the world, making him an actual enjoyable character. Who'd have thought it? Helman Gorst of all people. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, a huge thank you for watching and hope to catch you all on the next one. Alright guys, bye. <laughs>